Great, good morning. Okay, so let's have a quick recap of what we were working on last lesson. We wanted to make an app um, that you can log in to manage your finances. The whole point of it was so that we can connect to a database. Um, and I think we managed to make it so that you can type in a username and a password. Here we go. So I think it was Mr. Dring and super secure, just password. You made your own. And we made it so that it should try and log in. I can't remember what actually happened. But, oh, there we go. Yeah, user ID one is Mr. It's happening there. Now, how did we do it? Well, we added in a data source. So remember, we went right click and add a new item. And you added in a service based database. This MDF file is um, something that you can open up in Access. We double clicked on it here so that we have the server explorer. So we created a table. We put in some data into that table. Um, and I think we just added one user at the moment. Um, um, and we could have done it using transactional structured query language, but we used the design surface over here. I don't know why this is going so slowly. We'll see. Oh, there we go. So we've got the table definition. We have a primary key, unique identifier for every single um, record in the table. And then we have the username, the first name and the last name. Um, and we can also see the table data. There we go. So I wonder why it didn't show the last name. Um, oh, notice we also didn't store the plain text password. We only stored an MD5, no, it looks like an SHA256 hash of this password. How did we do that? Well, we set up a connection string. I seem to remember it was fairly complicated. We right clicked on the thing over here, the data table, get properties, and we got the connection string from over here. Um, and then we made a connection to that database. We put in a select statement. So selects from the users table where username matches this parameter and the password hash matches that parameter. Then we have to say what the parameters are. So we added a parameter in to say username is what we've extracted from the text box and the hash is what we've extracted from the text. No, we extracted the password from the text box. We generated a hash like we've been doing on compete that we code at UK. I think we made a function for this Yeah, There we go. Get hash SHA256 hash. Generate the hex digest and return that. Then we extract it. Um, so why was it not displaying the information properly? Let's have a look. I'm going to put a breakpoint on and run it. Um, and see what happens. If we try and log in, Mr. String password. Um, here we go. The first name is set to Mr. The last name is set to Dring. But for some reason, it wasn't displaying it. It was just doing Mr. The last name was Dring. Weird. First name. Oh, look. First name is just a very long string. So maybe if we scroll across. There it is. <laughs> so that must be because of the way the database is structured, um, which is interesting. Look, we've got an N char here, um, which is going to have 128 characters for first name and last name. That sounds a little bit silly. Let's change this to um, you know, var char. So N char must mean that you have exactly that number of characters. Um, and if we have a var char, that makes me think it's a variable amount of characters up to 128. Let's see. We'll have to update the table. It prepares an update script. Um, update the database. There we go. Oh, no, that didn't do it. Come on. Var char. Update. Update the database. I don't know what's going to happen really in the actual database. Will it trim all the stuff or will it keep all of those spaces? Good job we haven't got much in the database. Let's see. Close the design view. Open up the data view. 
Yeah, here we go. We've got all sorts of Navsky white space on the end. So let's get rid of all of that. Store it. Let's go to the end. Shift, home, delete, enter. That should be a little bit better. Stop. Start again. So let's have a look and see if this works now. So if I put in Mr. Dring and password, hopefully it will get yeah, that's better. It's just got Mr. and Dring with all, without all of that white space. And then if we go to output down here, that's so much better. We found a record. Well, what happens if we um, have somebody that doesn't exist? Let's put my password in wrong. And it tries to generate the password hash for password for but it doesn't find anyone. So we could do with trying to detect that and have a little message. So all of that waffle, just a reminder of where we got up to. Let's now put some status on here to say whether or not we've logged in so we can move on. I think we've lost lots of these boxes. There we go. Let's have a label. Pop that over here. Oh dear, I've now got two labels. Go away. All right, sorry, we had to pause for quite a long time, so let's continue again. We've added a label on um, form one. Let's change some properties of that label. It's going to be a dynamic label, as in it's going to need to change a couple of times. So we need to change the name of it to something like LBL status. We should put some text in that's going to be something like enter your username and password to log in. And then instead of displaying to the console window, which no one's ever going to see, we can update that thing over there. So let's say LDL status dot text is equal to attempting to generate a password hash. No, we don't want to display that, do we? Yep. I'll give away everyone's password. Um, so it's this point, isn't it, where we know that we've succeeded. Login successful. And if it's not successful, well, I'm just going to set it to login failed before we attempt to do anything. So it might flash on screen for a small amount of time to say it's failed and then show success. We'll see. All right, Mr. Dring, password, login. Uh, oh, breakpoint. Yep, it's doing something. And then login successful. Awesome. So at this point, we want to upgrade our database so that we can store different stuff. It's a finance management thing. So we want another form to be able to view all transactions. It'd be nice to be able to add our own transactions in and everything like that. Um, but what happens if we put the wrong password in? Good, it says login failed. So let's make a new form, shall we? I don't think we've done this before. A multi-form graphical user interface project. So let's right click on our project. Make sure it's not the solution, but it is the project, and add a new Windows form. What should we go for? Um, it's the normal Windows form. There we go. Call it finances. So you can plan out what you want here. Um, I think I just want a list box, really, that's going to show some stuff. I haven't really planned out all that well yet. But we'll put a list box in. Maybe a label so we can see which user we're dealing with. Um, and it would be nice to make it a little bit more responsive, wouldn't it? So it kind of goes with the size of this. Um, so can we have a grid? View, data grid view, no. A table layout, yeah, something like that. 
So I want basically just a big label along the top so I can say these are the finances for... Do you know what? I can't be bothered with that. I'll just put it in the title at the top. Here, yeah, sorry. No label. And we'll dock this. Change the dock to fill. So it fills the whole window. That's better. It should scale with the window now. Um, and then we can change the name of this to LST Finances. Right, now we want to make this window appear when we've logged in successfully. So in order to do that, let's find the bit that says that we've logged in properly. So we've unpaused for quite, oh, sorry, we've paused for quite a long time to try and figure out some problems here. Um, when you paste in your connection string here, remember you right click on your database properties and you get all of this, control C, control V, it tends to put in extra spaces where you don't want them. So after you've pasted it, just press control Z and it will get rid of those extra spaces. It's really weird. Remember you need to escape your um, quotes. And then hopefully that should do it. I don't know why it puts in extra spaces when you copy and paste. Good, login failed. Let's to drink password. Login. We're there. Fab. Okay, I know there's some de debugging that we need to do. I just want to move on to the next thing to display your little um, window that we've just made. So we've made a login form and a finances form. So to make that form appear, when it says login successful, we need to create that finances form. So whatever you called your form, let's use that as a class. Let's say finances, um, finance form, or whatever you want to call it. Use the constructor to make a new one, and then show it. So that hopefully it doesn't appear if it fails. But if it works, Mr. Dern, Mr. Drink, password, we can now display it. There it goes. And it'd be really nice if we could see finances for and then my name. So this is where you can experiment and customize it. Let's see how we can do that. Well, in finances, I'm going to double click on here to get into the code. And, um, I suppose you could customize the constructor, but I don't really want to do that. Let's um, make a new public method for set user details. I want to see the first name and the last name. And also, it would probably be quite useful to see the ID and everything, and I should probably all pass that all as one big class. You can do that yourselves. Oh, I need a return value. Void. Sorry, return type. Then when we get first name and last name, I'm just going to set the title at the top. So this dot text equals you are viewing the finances for first name, last name. I don't want it to literally say first name, last name. I want it to say the actual value of those um, parameters. Then, when we call it, which was from here, so we show it, we can just do finance form dot set user details, I think, to um, the first name and the last name that we've got. First name and the last name. Let's see if that works. Let's log in. There we go. You are now viewing the finances for Mr. Drain. Your job is to try and create a new table so that you can store transactions um, and then make it so that it will uh, look up all of the transactions for that particular user and display them in this box here. But I'm going to pause so we can do some debugging at the moment. I'm aware I'm teaching you some bad practice here. Normally we try and separate out the... Um, a code that makes it work from the database 
and separate that out from the user interface. And there's lots of different models for doing that. But normally, MVC, model, view, and controller would be the way to go. But I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for you to understand. But you can research how to do MVC. It's just outside the scope of um, the A-level for you. But what we will need to do is have a primary key for the user. So I want to specify that as well, int ID. And then we can store that so we can access it when we look up the financial information. Adding in this parameter is going to break um, something. Control Shift B to build it. There we go. There's no argument specifying the ID. So let's specify that ID. And then we want to store that somewhere so we can access it. Well, let's store it as a private um, attribute. And we can store that to use it later. So your job is to create a new table that will have date and amount and description and a foreign key of user ID and a primary key of transaction ID and then put in a query to select all the transactions for that user and display them in your list box. Okay, so we're going to need to add a new table. So back to our table in the server explorer. Remember, double click on here. And then let's right click on tables to add a new table. We want to have a primary key. Come on, design surface. It doesn't take you that long. Let's give it a name. Call it transactions. We want, yeah, primary key called ID. Well, maybe we should call it transaction ID, but I'll leave it as it is for now. And then we should have amount, which should be, oh, money. It's interesting. Let's go with that, shall we? Not used that before. Uh, description, which could be quite a lot of text. So I'm going to put um, so just text. I don't know what the limit is there, but it. I think in MySQL it goes up to like 64 kilobytes or something, should be plenty big enough. We could do with a date. Date might be a protected keyword, so um, yeah, I think it's all right, it's not giving us an error. Is there a time stamp? The date time would be better. Date time, there we go, so we know the date and the time of day. And we need our foreign key so we can link it to that users table. So let's just go for user ID, which is an integer, so that it can link. Um, I don't know if we can set up the relationship in here. Don't really know. Don't know if we can set up indexing. Don't really know. Identity specification. A little bit. OK, and then we need to update. Interestingly, it will generate some C sharp code um, that you can, or well, sorry, some SQL code that you can then run if you want to generate this with code. But for now, we'll just do it manually and update the database. Now we should probably put some transactions in. So I think by the end of today's lesson, certainly we're not going to be able to, let's just refresh it to see transactions. We're not going to make it so that you can add stuff in. If we right click and show table data, um, my user, I've got an ID of one. So to maintain referential integrity, I shouldn't put any transactions in for anything other than a user ID that actually exists. Right, let's see. User ID, description, payday. How much money shall I get? Thousand pounds. I need to make um, an ID. The date, Ugh, what format is it expecting this to be in? Can I put that in? No. 6th of the 4th, 22. Ah, there we go. Nice. Midnight, I got £1,000. I don't like that I have to put this in. Next time, we'll see if we can change it so it automatically increments. That's really irritating. I'm going to have to pay £100 for some pizza on the 6th of the 4th, 2022, at 
9 o'clock a.m. User ID 1. That'll do. Okay, so you can put your own transactions in. Then what we want to do is be able to display those transactions in our finances form. Um, how do we do that? Well, for now, I'll just do it when the, for the form loads. So how did I do that? I double clicked on the, the bar at the top to get this thing here. So can we make it so that we can load from it? Right, let's go back to the other form and copy the bit that um, talks to the database because this looks quite useful. So the thing that connects to the database and does something with a database, I want that. And I want it to be reusable. So let's plop it down here. Public um, query DB with an SQL string. How about that? Um, and we want to be able to return. What do we want to return? A record. So what are the records? Oh gosh. The reader is what we want, isn't it really? Doesn't know what an SQL data reader is, so let's import that again. Alt enter. Not all paths return a value. Yeah, of course they don't. Um, we don't actually need that because that's not relevant to this form. We just want to return that reader so we can re read from it another time. But there will be some parameters that we pass in because we've got SQL here. We don't want to do that. We do want to pass in some parameters. Um, so we want something where we can have like names and value pairs. That sounds like a dictionary, but there might all be different data types. Um, how can we do that then? SQL parameter collection. I suppose we could pass that in. Oh no, why don't we pass in the SQL command instead? That would make much more sense. There we go. This looks like something that we could reuse now. We connect to the database, we execute the query, we return the results. Why is that useful? Well, because now we can generate some SQL and say, I would like to select everything from uh, which table, the transactions table, please. But only where the user ID is equal to a parameter of user ID. What do I mean by user ID? Well, we better specify it. So we need to have that SQL command again. Can you specify that with some text? Yeah, there we go, SQL. Oh, we need to give it a name, CMD. And then we can add our parameters. Right, we need to add, oh no, it's parameters.add with value, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. So we can specify the user ID. Notice the capitalization must match here. And then the value is what we stored. So I don't want to put capital ID. I do want to show this. Sorry, I know it's the end of the lesson, but it'd be really nice if we can just finish this off. Then I can query the database with that command. We haven't yet displayed anything from it for each. No, we run out of time. I'll have to leave that as a challenge to actually display it in the thing above. But it should potentially query the database to get the transactions, although it won't display them in the list box yet. What have I done wrong here? There we go. All right, so I'll leave that as a challenge for you. See if you can display the transactions in our list box for next time.